So as I said, commitment is required. I honestly believe that this can change the path of your life in a massive way. Not only can you generate large amounts of wealth, you can generate jobs, you can change industries. And and, and I'm not talking about making a million dollars here. I'm talking about making tens of millions of dollars or potentially even hundreds of millions of dollars. There is no skill more powerful than that of creating valuable companies which continue to grow on their own and compound even when you go away. And the really the only way to get wealthy in America and any capitalistic system is to own a company because taxation of salaries is so high that you'll never get true wealth without generating a company and letting that equity and the value of the company compound tax-free and grow. Number two, like anything worthwhile, the boot camp requires a significant commitment. It needs your energy. It needs your focus. If you do the work, you're going to get the rewards. If you don't do the work, you're not going to get the rewards. Unfortunately, our university and school system in K-12 is failing to teach most of our younger people that today with the anyone that shows up gets a trophy mentality. And there's a, there's a word for that. It's called socialism. It's called training people that they don't have to do the work. Those are the people who will not be successful. They will be also rands, and they're not going to become CEOs or top CEOs, certainly, in entrepreneurs that are going to change the world and generate real wealth and real jobs and also real wealth for all the other senior managers and, and, and people that can participate in the equity growth of a successful company. So as I said earlier, if it was easy, everyone would do it. And we know everyone isn't doing it. Virtually all of the tools you need to design and launch any business are included in the boot camp. But you also need to read key books, especially books in the areas where your greatest risk of your business is and your greatest lack of knowledge. It's Elon Musk that has said you can become an expert in anything just by reading. And that's true in terms of the foundational facts and knowledge. It's not true in terms of the practice because you need to spend 10,000 hours, as they say, or five years. And you'll, we'll talk about that more in the boot camp as well, uh, to become an expert in something. At least that's my definition. My definition of expert is someone who has done something full time for five years because then neuroplasticity will have kicked in and they'll be able to do things in the blink of an eye that others would, would spend weeks or months struggling with. Next, learn to select and manage people well. Obviously, you've got to have that art or skill as well. You've got to learn to lead teams and projects. You've got to learn to keep top people, which means creating a culture that attracts and keeps those top people so you don't have a revolving door because constant turnover in the management team will not help you achieve a big vision and lots of success. Next, you've got to conquer yourself with self-discipline. There's so many quotes about this uh, and so much in personal development that's necessary. That Conquering yourself is really the first step and having the discipline to do what others won't do and what you know must be done to be successful. And lastly, have uh, a commitment that only the top 5 or 10% of people possess. You probably wouldn't be here trying to take the boot camp and starting if you already weren't self-actualized and someone that was willing to be a lifelong learner and work hard to achieve bigger goals. More study guidelines. I recommend that you really block off time and lock yourself away in a quiet room. If you have any noise, put headphones on or noise-canceling earphones so there are not distractions. I recommend using a full-size PC screen and pausing it and not a phone or tablet. I would recommend two screens, as I said earlier, for the efficiency of that and the ability to both take notes and watch the video as a, as a large screen format size as you can. 
Number three, turn off all email devices. I can't emphasize this strongly enough. Frankly, if you can't have the discipline to focus and do just this and turn off your Facebook and your Instagram and all those other social media and phone call things, you're not likely to be very successful as a CEO because CEOs have to say no to most things and focus on just those things that are important. It's the old Pareto effect, which is 20% of the things cause 80% of the business of the business success. And sometimes that's true in personal life too. So you've got to think a lot and be strategic about what are those 20% of the things today, you know, this week, this month, this quarter, and, and focus on getting those done without distractions. Number four, go in sprints of 20 minutes, whatever works for you. You might be able to concentrate and focus for an hour, but plan breaks so that you're fresh. And this isn't just, you know, running over you and you're not paying attention and drifting. I'd recommend you pause the video when you are taking notes or you'll miss things because there's a lot of rapid fire information here. Next, persistence and commitment are not just keys to success in any endeavor. They are probably the most important things that an entrepreneur needs to be successful. And if you listen to the top entrepreneurs, that will always be in the top five list that someone has to have commitment because a lot of people are going to tell you what you're doing is crazy. If in fact it's good, you're going to have a lot of people telling you crazy because it's a step above what everyone else is thinking about, right? So without that commitment, you're going to be average. And average does not make a successful CEO or entrepreneur. And another concept to understand is you may be running into things you don't disagree with here. And you've got to open your mind and realize this comes from 30 years as a CEO. Uh, you can read my biography and see the little video about my background. I don't want to be redundant with that here, but I've made investors over a billion dollars. I've grown two startups to a hundred million in sales, and I've collected these best practices and used my engineering training and talent. Because the first eight years of my career was as a software engineer, chief technical officer, and VP of engineering. And so essentially, I've collected all these things and organized them into a systematic framework or a flow chart of how to make building a business replicable in both the art and science of business and business design. Next, we're going to award you a Master's of Business Acceleration, and our company will validate that that was received. Uh, if we get reference calls and checks. And I think this will become a more valuable credential over time as it gets better known and we expand the CEO boot camp. So that's sort of the prize at the top of the mountain that you'll get initially. But of course, the, the value of that is going to accrue for your entire career, if not your entire life. So you've got to make a plan for this commitment. And here's the breakdown of what we recommend, given that there's 30 to 40 hours of course material, plus extra reading and exercises and other things, it's typically going to be 40 a minimum and probably 60 hours for a lot of people to get through all this course. And the more you can compress that, the more efficient it's going to be, because you're not going to have to review the material and it's going to stick better. And this is called immersion learning. Tony Robbins and others uh, preach about how much uh, they can learn when they shut out everything else and just focus on this. So the best possible way to do this would be to take a whole week, call it a vacation, dig in, get it all done. Now, I know a lot of people for practical purposes can't do that. And it's recommended, but it's certainly not required. The second best thing to do is to spend four hours per day, five days a week. And that's a big commitment too. Now, if you're an entrepreneur that's starting a business, you should have that time and you should make that commitment and have that priority because that's now your full-time job and you're not likely to be working 40 hours weeks. You're likely to be working 60 plus hour weeks in the marathon of starting a company. 
but you've got to commit to do a certain amount. What I'm recommending is that you uh, do a minimum of two hours per day of material, and that's going to generate a good result. You're going to get uh, great retention uh, with that level. But if you go to only one hour a day, you're probably not going to get the retention that's required. So pick one of these, commit to it, and put the times on your calendar now. Schedule it and, and plan on being there to do it. Obviously, you can take breaks and, and come back, but you should always commit and have a plan. So welcome to the jungle. Um, you know, I, I'm going to use a lot of military and aircraft metaphors. One reason is I'm a pilot. I've never been in the, in the military, but I respect their discipline and their planning and how they would never go into a marketplace without the proper intelligence to learn and be successful before they went in and be prepared. So a few more hints and tips on study guidelines. Immerse yourself and come out with something that can be more valuable than an MBA. I, I, I really mean that sincerely and honestly. I've talked with and worked with so many MBAs, and I'm sometimes shocked at the lack of understanding they have on what makes a business successful. Uh, when you break, um, you're, you're always going to be committed to coming back and restarting. And by a break, I mean take a 10, 15 minute break, have a coffee, uh, get fresh air, take your dog for a walk, whatever it is you do to refresh your mind so that you can focus and concentrate and go another push. Neuroscience has shown that distractions, you know, really hurt results and retention. And in fact, we sometimes think we can multitask, but the reality is we don't. The science says we don't. And we're missing when we're focused on one thing. Our conscious is very narrow and we think we're watching a movie in the background while we're reading our phone, but we're really missing that completely. 